Well, we removed the water hose because it had a hole in it, so we have to get a new one, and Tara has a new trick. Go on. Uh. <laughs> Awkward sawing angle for the win. I don't think that's how that works. This is not a tutorial. This is a necessity. <laughs> Riff! <laughs> Tara just finished cutting up the trim. She was really cutting up. <laughs> and it looks pretty good. Got some vertical lines there. So we'll have a piece there. We'll have some down here. And the front of these drawers will have the same treatment. What are you doing? Putting faces on drawers. Seems a little two-faced. <laughs> it is. This is certainly one way to clamp it down. Life finds a way, I guess. Well, 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 what have we here? Looks like the fridge came in. Well, the handle's off. Can you handle it though? Oh, and look at that fit. Pretty good planning, I'd say. Great job, bub. Thanks. You're not gonna tell me a great job? Great job to you too. <laughs> Thanks, babe. So I checked out the vent holes that I made in these sidewalls and they mostly line up. They certainly line up well enough for ventilation. They're maybe a little far back, but close enough. Before we turned the Dometic on, we did let it sit for around 18 to 20 hours just so the oils and the coolant and everything could settle down to where it's meant to be, just in case when it was shipped it was sideways or something like that. And that's something I've heard recommended a few times. Did it help? I don't know, but might as well do it just to be safe. I'm going to load this up with some cold drinks to help it cool down a little bit faster. Wow, it's been on for maybe six minutes and it's already cool in here. That is weird. It's crazy how fast that works. Compared to my old fridge, the propane three-way fridge, which also ran on DC or AC, that thing took probably five hours to get cool. Okay, quick update. This has been on for 10 minutes and it's saying it's around 37 degrees already. Surely it doesn't get down to 37 degrees that fast. That would be insane. This is the before. We got Polly Pocket here putting on some Polly on the cabinet faces. Well, this is actually a second coat, but you know. And this is basically what the kitchen nook is gonna look like. A few little tweaks here and there and coat of Polly along the seams, but. Seems pretty good. Ba -da -ba -ba. We got the camper back off the truck so I can work on the mounts on the truck. But before I do that, I'm gonna go underneath and brush all the rusty spots with this Osfo stuff to kind of treat the rust and cure it to keep it from spreading and to make it stronger. Meanwhile, Tara is working on little touch-ups <laughs> with the paint. Go on, touch it up. Ooh, satisfying. Great. <laughs>
I am currently working on getting this diesel heater up and running and doing some testing on it and installing the fuel line here, which is a pain in the butt. Meanwhile, Tara is under the camper installing some insulative panels in the gaps in our floor just to give us that little extra bit of warmth. Why is back at the straps again? What do they smell like? My boy likes straps. Currently we have the camper off of the truck and that's for a few reasons. First off, I need to go get an oil change and get my brakes inspected before I fully mount the camper to the truck. In order to mount the camper to the truck, I have to take it off so I can see what I'm working with because it's not exactly straightforward in a Tacoma. So what I've come up with, as you saw me making, are these little brackets and essentially it's just a piece of angle iron with rounded edges and holes drilled through it and they mount under the bed bolts so this is what bolts this composite truck bed to the actual frame of the truck so these mount under there and that will give me little tie down points from which i can anchor the camper to secondary to that i also need to install the diesel heater into the truck i think i'm going to actually mount it to the truck and then just have the hot air out port going into the camper and that way if we ever need to remove the camper we just undo a hose or two and it's easy to do we're trying to get everything that has to be done here done so we can hit the road and do what we need to on the road because we're getting a little restless ready for some adventure oh and here's what the diesel heater setup looks like it's pretty dark when we were testing it but i'm very impressed it used very little fuel very little battery comparatively although the startup when the plugs are firing uses a lot pretty cool i'm excited to get that mounted it's amazing how much heat it was putting out i think it's gonna blow this little camper out of the water last night tara finished putting our insulation in the floor of the camper so we should now be a bit warmer so that's going to be really nice and eventually we'll have some insulation on these doors here as well all right so our water tank fill up works finally so now we can actually test the sink and we finished the gray water out from the sink today so hopefully this all works let's see oh i don't feel so good I'll let me just wash my hands real quick. We've got the diesel heater mounted into the truck. You can see where it's gonna live, taking up this space that we couldn't really get to before. Got the exhaust ported straight out the bottom of the truck through the bed. Intake's right there, we'll mount that somewhere. You can see the fuel pump clicking away, pushing that fuel up. Tank is in the back of the truck, filter. And the Jackery is currently heating the plug, so it's pushing 100 watts but that'll soon die down within about a minute down to just running the fan and the fuel pump, which is around 10 watts, I think. Here's what the control looks like. That little red indicator means the glow plug is charging up. This little blue thing means the fuel's pumping and that means the air is pumping. Let me go show you where the exhaust is. All right, so you can see the tip of it right there. It's angled mostly away from the tire. Yeah, so far so good. So this is gonna take up all of this negative space we can't really use. So it's kind of perfect to mount it there. And then in the summer, we can take this out and have that space. Tara is currently wiring in our shore power, quote unquote. So this is gonna be our little shore power port, which will essentially just connect up to a little power strip that'll sit under the fridge. So if we ever do have the opportunity to connect to power, we plug in and we can power our devices, we can plug in the Jackery, whatever we need to do. Welcome to the first test and hopefully the last test because it works. <laughs> protected and grounded. So in order to run the wiring out to the diesel heater up there, we're gonna need to drill a hole right above the water tank here to run the wires out discreetly. Feels weird to do, but let's do it. Oh. 
Here's a little cross section of our camper. Cheap plywood, cheap insulation, and a nice little aluminum exterior. months later and the camper is basically done. There are still a lot of little odd jobs that we're going to be doing on the road, but for the most part we've done all of the big work on it. Uh, this last week or two has been just a whirlwind of little small jobs and finishing touches all throughout the camper, so I haven't done the best job of filming it. And to be honest, most of it wasn't really that interesting. Let me give you one quick little look around the outside and the inside before we take off and get to adventuring, finally. You can see our Reflectix window insulators here, slash privacy curtains. Looks like we're running a grow off. <laughs> ah. Let me switch over to the GoPro. Okay, so I'm going to do a much longer tour video later covering all the little details. Here's the quick rundown. Down here is the window. You can see down into the truck where our backpacking gear is being stored and our tools. I got this little thermometer so we have an idea of what the temperature is and what the min and max is. Down below here, for now this is a little bookshelf area and it's also where the controls for the heater live. In here we have a bear box which may also be our toilet question mark and some camera gear and some shoes and stuff. There's plenty of storage here to be expanded upon. This table is held up by magnets and it's removable. It'll eventually anchor into this to become a table. That's a project for a future date. Bed up here, got the down comforter. Let me show you what's under the bed as far as storage goes. All right, over here we've got the essentials like disc golf, board games, fly rod, and we've got some backcountry banter stickers so we can start selling those again. This is my clothing. It's jam packed right now. I'm kind of starting with what I think I'll need and then I'll pare it down from there, but I've got like rain layers, down, insulation, and then a couple t-shirts and long sleeves. Tara's clothing, miscellaneous, electronics, art supplies, very important. Over on the couch, we've got some hanging things like headlamps. This is a remote for the heater. Uh, food storage up there. The couch we still need to reupholster, but that'll come later. Hopefully I'll have a sewing machine in the camper so I can actually make some gear on the road. These are our sleeping bags, and this is just kind of a temporary thing until we figure out what to do with them. Here's some pillows here. These are Costco down quilts stuffed inside those pillowcases. Got a little coat rack over here with things hanging up. More quick draw hangs, just in case we need the storage. And that brings us to the kitchen area. Down in this corner, as you know, we have the Jackery, some electronic storage, <laughs> a loaf of bread for some reason. We're still trying to figure out where everything goes. I'm sure that'll come in time. Got the Dometic fridge, which has been incredibly efficient. I've been super impressed with it. I'll have a review coming on that soon. Our drawer system with food and all of our accoutrement. You can see the sink up here already has a dish in it. Down below is some more storage. 
the instant pot, a lantern, some jars to do some sprouting with, and just miscellaneous stuff that we still need to apply to the camper like this weather seal. This cabinet door actually has removable hinges so we can take it off and put it on top of these drawers to make a little tabletop area. Tara's over here collecting nuts for the winter. <laughs> for squirrels. Yeah, there's a whole compartment in our camper for acorns so that we don't starve. Or there's a wildlife rescue center that needs acorns. Yeah! Will you show them the main pile? It's definitely an on year for acorns. They've been going like crazy. Also this. Well, I tried to come up with a corny pun, but I couldn't. Hey everybody, it's future Tara and Joe. We're actually full time traveling now on the road in the truck camper and we haven't showered in probably six days. You can't tell, can you? Well, I don't know. We wanted to interject a little message into the end of this truck camper renovation series. It would be some kind of fire's fantasy to act like we did this on our own. You saw the physical work we've put into it and lots of money and a lot of other things. Sweat, tears, and all of the above. But parents, patrons, friends, you all made it happen. We could not have done it without you. So thank you, really. Yeah, thank you everybody that helped us along the way. All the input, advice. Mom and dad for letting us keep that camper in the driveway for months on end and stay there dad for helping out so much along the way and the patrons for funding a project that mm -hmm. is not necessarily a typical backpacking video but a different sort of adventure yeah all of you and you the viewer for watching thank you thank you thank you thank you you all made this possible now let's start another adventure together on the road join us will you <laughs> The sea. <laughs> wub, wub, wub. Welcome to the future of truck camping. <laughs>